Our next speaker is Adam Davis, uh, who currently teaches physics at Wayne State College in Nebraska. He earned his Bachelor of Science in Physics from Brigham Young University and uh, his doctorate in science with an emphasis in cosmology from Case Western Reserve University. His current interests include spirit matter, free will, Bohmian mechanics, and time. And he will address us on scientific realism and the simulation argument. So, pleasure, uh, a pleasure being here. So we've heard uh, a few uh, references to the idea of living in a um, simulated reality or, or of some sort. And um, what do we mean by that? There's been a, a few explanations. Um, um, one person uh, put forth a, a particularly um, interesting uh, formulation of the simulation idea, and that's uh, Professor Nick Bostrom, who's been mentioned times, but uh, he uh, gave an argument that said that basically one of three things will happen. One, um, will never achieve a post-human state. Um, humanity will destroy themselves or, or something, um, but the, or that post-humanity is simply an impossibility, and so that's option one. The uh, second option was that if we have post-humans, um, they have no interest whatsoever in running ancestor simulations. They just don't want to. And, uh, or are not interested in for whatever reason and uh, and uh, trying to recreate doing quantum archaeology or anything like that and then the uh, third option is that uh, quantum archaeology and other things like that have occurred and that they are running simulations and then if you have a plurality of uh, uh, simulations and you can give um, the principle of indifference um, one of these things are one of these three things are likely, and uh, I uh, counter this in a little bit uh, with a uh, or counterpoint it with a little bit of the uh, paradigm of scientific realism, and scientific realism has a whole bunch of subtleties to it, but uh, we can uh, exemplify it a little bit with the cliche: if a tree falls in the woods, does anybody hear? Uh, and a, or does it make a sound? And uh, the scientific realist answer is yes. The sound really does occur. Maybe nobody's around to hear it, but it's, uh, the event happened in that it's there. Um, that is not the case for all, all uh, epi 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 <laughs> epistemological models. Um, and um, so let's uh, compare a little bit um, scientific realism and the simulation argument. In the case of scientific realism, to really fully model reality, you have to model everything. You can't model just what's um, being seen, but you have to model the tree that nobody hears. And uh, not just at the uh, macroscopic level, but at the microscopic level as well. And uh, because everything is really happening, it's not um, events are not mind dependent. Okay, reality has an existence outside of the human mind. Now, our perception of the reality might not uh, might not be there, but uh, the reality does have a, a, a distinct and separate existence from human human minds. The simulation argument, well, at least as uh, Nick Bostrom uh, presented it, is you know, really all we need to do is simulate human minds. And then, because that's what we see, and as long as you're simulating the human mind, then uh, then you have enough data to create the reality. Okay. So if nobody's in the bathroom right now, we can shut down the the data and simulation of the bathroom, and we don't need to. It's just it's just not there. Not until somebody actually opens the door and walks into it, um, is it there? Now, you would also, he doesn't actually talk about this, but you'd also have to have enough simulation to correlate the, uh, the two different perspectives of people so that they can agree. Um, 
Now, uh, the question here is, can we get away with just simulating human minds? And um, one of the things that was uh, um, mentioned by our keynote speaker was the idea of chaos and other things like that. And uh, what we find is that the amount of computation or the influence of things that can occur given chaos theory is that very large results can occur from very, very minute things. And so just because nobody's in the bathroom does that mean we have to uh, ignore it and ignore what's going on inside the bathroom. Um, chaos theory would suggest really we do have to. I mean, the classic, you know, butterfly flaps its wings and now we have a hurricane in the uh, Pacific. I guess they call it a typhoon. Um, Another interesting uh, thing was uh, Brian Cox. He gave a, a BBC talk um, a couple of weeks ago, or a couple of months ago, to a bunch of uh, affluent people who wanted to pay a lot of money to listen to a celebrity um, talk about science. Um, and he uh, pointed out that according to the theories of physics as we know them or understand them now, any minute change that occurs here will influence everything everywhere. And the example he pulled out is a, a diamond, and he rubbed the diamond and said, when I'm affecting the just the slight minute change in temperature of the diamond, I'm actually influencing the uh, quantum wave functions in uh, the Andromeda galaxy. Um, he did make a little bit of a boo-boo with uh, his uh, citation of the Pauli exclusion principle, um, but even if the, the, the justification given wasn't quite, the, quite precise, his, uh, his main point stood, is that, uh, and this is that the computations necessary were, were uh, tremendous. And indeed, um, it turns out that, uh, that the computations necessary, it, we, can, we can demonstrate that quantum, compu quantum computation can, um, compute every single physical phenomena that we're aware of. Problem is that it takes an infinite amount of computation. Um, and we can go beyond that a little bit. As uh, Briscotti mentioned, um, the fastest computer is the universe itself. Moreover, um, the largest, uh, the smallest, well, well, the largest computer, the size of the computer needed to simulate the universe would be the universe itself. You can't simulate anything. An atom can't acquire more information, um, possess more data than the actual atom itself. Okay, um, And so whenever you engage in some kind of simulation, you are actually simulating something smaller than what scientific realism suggests. And, uh, and that builds into it an incredible inefficiency. And inefficiency isn't usually considered one of the hallmarks of uh, post-humanity. Um, so that, uh, that becomes a, a little bit of a difficulty. And so all arguments about simulation that are really, really trying to seriously tackle it or propose a, a kind of laziness is that we're really only simulating a portion of reality and that becomes good enough. So like we just need to simulate every human mind that has ever existed and uh, that's a much, much smaller subset of, of reality than the universe itself. And that's good enough. We could do that, but uh, that runs into you know problems with the chaos and the interconnectivity and all this kind of stuff. Um, a much more subtle uh, discrepancy occurs in the concept of of explanation. Um, scientific realism's ex concept of explanation is a little bit different than uh, simulated reality, and Briscotti actually mentioned this, you know, the laws of physics for our physics don't have to be the laws of physics of the simulated reality. And so you can get these supernatural events because they're obeying their physics, but the, uh, the programmers can tweak the code in whatever way possible. And, uh, or if uh, something happens bad, um, there's a, a blue screen of death in the simulation. Well, we just rewind it um, a couple of minutes and uh, run everything again, and, uh, and we're all okay. Uh, that runs into a little bit of uh, fun with the Mormon concept of accountability and agency, but um, we won't worry about that too much. 
Okay. Anyway, the explanation's a little bit uh, a little bit subtle, and uh, suffice to say that uh, if we were to go to a pure simulated reality, the concept that we are sometimes associated with explanation uh, needs some adjustment. In the end, what we can see is that um, it's okay to assert that uh, a simulated reality that we are living in a matrix, as it were, or that we're brains in the vat or of some other variation. But it does come at the cost of giving up the, the paradigm of scientific realism. Um, the two don't really play nice together. Um, the scientific reality, or scientific realism, um, has been very, very successful, has, uh, has uh, all of our technological advances, have come more or less in the, in the uh, realm of uh, a realist mode. Um, simulation arguments, uh, track record for scientific advancements, a little bit less, less prolific, um, but that's, that's uh, philosophers and philosophers can have all kinds of fun ideas. Um, so, well, that's more or less my conclusion. Have fun. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> I think you are uh, making the assumption that in case uh, we are living in a simulated reality, uh, we can never find out that, that we are living in a simulated reality. And then uh, I think uh, I do completely agree with you. We should keep scientific realism because it has been very successful so far. But suppose we could find out somehow don't you think then we should appropriately extend our concept of scientific realism to accommodate the new understanding of reality? Okay, so the uh, observation, the potentiality for observation of, uh, of a simulated reality, well, one, we'd have to identify the observables. And, uh, we can, and uh, this is another uh, a philosophical subtlety is that we can really only observe what our theory tells us we can observe. And so if our theory doesn't uh, allow us to, uh, to uh, assume um, a simulation, then we'll never see any data. Well, the best we could see are anomalies that are inconsistent with her, with her theory. And um, the, uh, the other idea is that we, we just might assume that they would let us see. I mean, maybe we make an observation and we see a glitch, a glitch in the matrix, as it were. And, and then again, they can just rewind and rewrite the entirety of everything. And so maybe we discover it, but rewind a couple seconds and our discovery is gone. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>